Welcome to Dano on Fire right here on High TV. Today on the show, we have come all the way to Mount Lavinia to have a very relaxed, different kind of a show. I'm speaking to Hans, who has worked with HIV on stage, in film, in commercials. He is a package with a lot of questions. But everyone asks me one question. What does Hans do? Now, this is a question that you're going to find the answer to on the show today. And he also loves food, and his main meal is always bacon. So we're going to get dirty and oily with us cooking some bacon and bringing you a show that's going to be full of information. So I'm with Hans and I told you at the intro, everyone is confused about this person called Hans. <laughs> so I just wanted to like elaborate on the fact, Hans, what do you exactly do? You know, that, so many rumours. Rumours as to what I do? Yeah. Because some people actually think you provide sex, whereas that's not the case. So I just want to like... No, not for everybody. That's true. One I person, know, no but I, I just want to know what exactly you do. Well... Uh, Together with uh, PABA, we run the Grassroots Trust. And the Grassroots Trust focuses on sexual and reproductive health education, prevention of gender-based violence, intimate partner violence. Uh, right now, what Grassroots is focusing on is working with schools. So this last week, actually, I was in Batiklo, uh, working with about 150 teachers from uh, 15 different schools, uh, looking at how they can do modules on prevention of cyber exploitation and violence because there's a seems to be wherever there are kids with smartphones there seems to be a propensity towards cyber exploitation mm -hmm. so where we work with the young men and we work with the young women and we sort of base it on the values of respect empathy and also promoting self-esteem and the value of being sensible in terms of what you do online all right now see when it comes to the word sex even for me to say it today, in 2018, on this show, it holds me back. Do you think the culture of Sri Lanka has changed to, because for you to go and speak in Batiklo, do you think people are open enough to get this information to their head? Well, it's like this. I think people, whether it is in Batiklo or anywhere in Sri Lanka, have recognized the need to have these discussions openly, given the incidents that are being recorded. Mm. So if you take uh, Vaunia last year in November, there was a civil uh, a protest by civil society organizations specifically on gang rape. Mm. Now that really made us sit up because it was not a protest against gender-based violence or intimate partner violence, not even a protest against rape. It was specifically a protest against gang rape. Mm. And then when we inquired further, we found that there had been a high incidence rate of gang rape in that area. And also the celebrated case or the infamous case of Vidya in Jaffna. Something that people don't realize is that that gang rape was also videoed mm. and it's part of that gang rape mm. culture mm. now in january this year there was a nurse that was also gang raped in colombo that was also videoed so as we sometimes humorously say through our v-day productions uh, there are entrepreneurs in sri lanka mm. and some of these entrepreneurs are targeting children in schools in order for children in schools both girls and boys to provide them with content. Mm. So that is why we're working in Batiklo and that is why we're advocating even with government, Ministry of Education and even the National Institute of Education that it is time to have open and frank discussions in the classroom because children have unprecedented access to information. Yeah. That was just at the tip of the It's there. Except you, everyone else has a smartphone. <laughs> yeah. so, so kids have to have a kind of scientific, sensible approach in the classroom to help them balance out all that noise that they get online. Mm. Now, out of so many things that you could have become in life, why did you choose this particular path? And how did you sort of stumble upon it? Or was it a calling for you that you need to... <sighs> well, my background is in HIV and drug use. Okay. So how did you get into that? Like, you know, when I was growing up, I never told my mom, you know, I want to fight against HIV and drug use. You know, that was not in my itinerary of things. <laughs> So I, I worked uh, for an organization in India. It was a grassroots development organization in India in a place called Pune, okay. called Deep Grey Society. 
And Deep Grace Society worked with three urban slum communities and I was their volunteer coordinator. Mm. This is how young were you at that time? Uh, this is, now we're talking 99, 2000, that, that time. 18 years ago. <laughs> 18 years ago. Okay. Uh, so during that time, that's when I first, I had just finished my first degree and that's when I first started looking into HIV and looking at the stigma and discrimination that people living with HIV faced. Mm. Uh, the kind of fear that there was of people living with HIV. So my journey with HIV, for example, has 18 years later brought me to a place where people living with HIV can no longer pass on the virus if they're on medication. So that's incredible in terms mm. of this 18 years and in terms of the science mm. that has allowed us to come to a place like this. Unfortunately, what prevails is ignorance. Yeah. So not many people know about this. Again, because of our reticence, like you pointed out, to talk about sex or even say the word sex. Mm. So we feel it is very important to have frank and open discussions and we need to approach that in an age-appropriate manner so that kids learn early themes like respect and empathy and self-esteem because mm. that is what ultimately is of value. That is true and I think if you touch the most important things of not, you don't need to speak about sex but if you speak about respect and basic things that come with humanity. I think Correct. it just evolves and make, it makes a person... Yeah, I think we need to help people understand that what is needed right now is to... how we treat another human being. Are we actually talking about that? Mm. Because there's so much hatred, there's so much division, there's so much... Um, ethnic questions that keep emerging. I mean, Sri Lanka obviously is an example of that. Where we continue to look at each other as the other, mm. someone that is other than us. Mm. And I keep trying to help especially children and teachers and parents understand that what we need to do is help people understand even boy and girl primarily first as human being uh, because I don't believe that other than what is between your legs there is any difference really. Of course. In terms of opportunity, in terms of possibility. And also in terms of talent or anything in life. Yeah. We're going to get into a break, but there's something about Hans in terms of all the work that we have done together or even the time that we have shared in conversation. When you speak about food, uh. Hans literally makes love to the word food. So I think it runs in their family and bacon seems to be the biggest part of their lives. We'll speak about what food and how Hans sort of has this love towards it with uh, we moving into his kitchen right after this. Yeah, this chili is the hottest chili in the world. It's like the It smells booth. like rubber. <laughs> Welcome back to Done One Fire right here on High TV. I'm with Hans and he's actually mm. cooking up a storm. Uh, so Hans likes a few things. Yeah. Uh, all that pork, is... Pork and pork. Pork. Yeah. <laughs> pork yeah. and pork. He likes yeah. it all. Yeah. So, so you have lingus happening. Yeah, we have, what we're going to do, Dan, is we're going to have palm party. Oh, okay. So we're going to have paripu. We're going to have a lingus curry with jasmine yeah. curry powder. Okay. Super stuff. Of course. And we are going to have this omelette that I make with chunky bacon. And uh, egg and cheese. And I put in this chili. Come mm. here and taste this chili. So My this, God, you have a bucket full of chili. Yeah, this chili is the hottest chili in the world. It's like the It smells like rubber. <laughs> Not a sale point. Danu, taste a smell, take a smell. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's like very strong. Meat. So what the Indian army does is, is it actually uses this chili in its uh, tear gas. It's that strong. Really? Yeah, so I'm going to put this in. Jesus Christ, can we talk after you put that in? Yeah, you might be able to talk. It adds a lovely sort of plummy flavor. And then this chili together with the egg We'll sort of blows your head off. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. As long as it does. So what you need is lots of roast pang and butter. So it's a sort of win-win situation. You know what? A few days ago I would have just stayed and finished the whole dish. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not doing so well physically yeah. these days. So, yeah. so, but so come and see Danu if you like. I can't because they put me here to stand here and wait. Ah, okay. <laughs> so you can't see this. But, but I can see it on the camera. Okay, so if you can see it on the camera, what is going to happen here is that the chili is going to get into everything. Okay. And then so, you guys all very lazy cooking. Right, but it's good. It's, it's like a man's world. 
Yeah, yeah, and I like sort of chunky bacon. You need to, I mean, it's so chunky. Sometimes you need to put a Caesar in and sort of cut yeah, it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, so tell me about uh, your and family. chicken. Chicken is a super thing. Uh, the not chicken, the Caesar is a super Caesar, thing. Yeah, super even thing. my sister cuts a lot of things out of a yeah. Caesar, like yeah. manlung and all. She cuts with yeah, Caesar. Yeah, super. Yeah, I have to ask you. Hmm? Tell me about your family. Even your sister cooks really well. So my sister is the my sister is the cook of the family. She's okay. here actually. Natasha. Yeah, I know. And uh, she's the cook of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, she learned from our mum, Maggi. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah, your mum is a cook as well. She was a good cook. She was a wonderful cook. But then all boys say that of their mothers. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Favoration. Yeah, but uh, I mean, she cooked food the way that we love to eat it, and we love to continue cooking it. So can't yeah. be all bad. That is true. Now yeah. tell me a little bit about your school life. So you are from St Thomas's College. Yeah, uh, also. You played also, ja yeah, Jaffna Kari Pau is superb, no? no? Yes. But how you can you cook without it, no? But did you go to any other school except that? No, no, only oh, there. That's it. Okay, so tell me about your time as a raga player. And <laughs> did you also, were you also a prefect in school? Yeah, I was a prefect. You were one of those like all round. Not really. I, I Actually, I was talking to teachers yesterday about self esteem and I was telling them I really thought I was dumb when I was in school. Okay. Because Definition I, of dumb by the sense of getting good I was marks. getting low marks. Ah, yeah. I was I also did, very dumb. Then. Yeah, I didn't understand anything. Yeah. My language skills in singular weren't great. Yeah. My language skills in all three were very bad. Yeah, so that kind of standard testing doesn't really tell you of intelligence. Yeah, true. Because after I started studying in English, I realized that I could understand. So it was a language problem. It was a language problem, not an intelligence problem. But yes. that you wouldn't have known it the way that some of the teachers talk. That is true. Yeah. So, uh, uh, like from school, you also got into theatre. You have done films. You have do you do commercials <laughs> on and off. Uh, you are also. I did one commercial. That one that yes, you drive. One, That's one the only one that you have done. Ever done. Really. I doubt I do another. Ah, okay. Yeah. But money is good for commercials. Yeah, but. Yeah, that's yeah true. no harm. That's true. But tell me about your acting skills. Now, did it all sort of start in school? Yeah, actually, my acting, I would say I learned acting under Vinod. Okay. I think that's a fair comment. Uh, yeah, I think everything I know about theatre probably has its root there. Okay. And then maybe whatever else was added on was added on. But I think. The base is there. I would say even more than the base, even in terms of just the discipline. Mm. And your basic set of skills in terms of even directing. Uh, I think Vinod had a significant role to play. But how did you get into movies? Like, and also to, to sort of, you know, use Singhala as the main language and... Well, uh, again, it, it, it happened because someone saw... Now see, this scissor can be used to even cut lingus. Oh, yeah, super. <laughs> it, and if, the, if you are thinking of the lingus as a phallic symbol, it's a little harrowing. <laughs> but other than that, it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, the film, one film, Danu, uh -huh. uh, was because a director called Mr. Parakramajaya Singha. Yeah. He invited me to be in the film. Uh -huh. And uh, I really liked him and I enjoyed working with him. And I think, uh, I mean, I'm not really thought of doing a film with anyone else yet. Uh -huh. People have approached. But, uh, yeah, so it's, I, I suppose, but anything you have done I a few, do, right? Two. Yeah, but anything I do, it's I need to enjoy it. No, if you think you're going to have a good time, that is true. Then do it. If true. you think you're going to be miserable, don't. Okay, I just wanted to let you know if you've heard a sound, that's because there's a helicopter running around here. Um, so now you, like, uh, when you, when I have to define Hans, this is what <laughs> I said at the start. There are so many things. So some people have seen you in theatre. Some people have seen you in movies. Some people have seen you selling condoms. Not selling, but distributing condoms. So it's a it's a fair enough statement that I have to say nobody knows what exactly you do. Yeah, I mean that's okay, no? Yeah, that's, that's okay. You the don't want always. You helps. don't and you don't want to be boxed in anyway. Yeah. You don't. I mean, I'm sure Dano, you don't. Uh, you're not one appreciative of labels. Oh no. You don't. Now like why labels? do you have to throw me in the process? The question is saying, to uh, ask you. I'm just saying I don't think you appreciate oh, labels. Yes. Yes. Just, I'm yeah. asking questions from you, <laughs> not the other way around. Sorry, I apologize. Fine. I apologize. Show is under my name. Anyway. I apologize. Down on fire. Yes. Yeah. Now let's get into a break. When we do come back, we're going to speak more to Hans. Are we going to eat? Are we going to eat when we come back? Yeah, that's that's the third part. Ah, super. How long does this take? This will be done. This the egg is done. The dal is done. This lingo should be done in like seven to eight minutes. All right. So while we wait for seven to eight minutes, let's take a break. We'll see you on the other side with me getting into a lot of more. What do you think about society life? 
I, I believe, don't see you I, I don't really mean it. <laughs> A bit like that. Uh, with shades on. Welcome back to the show. So it's time to eat what Hans put together. So we're talking about chunky bacon egg. Yes. And... Uh, Lingus and dal. No. And you got to tear the bread. Yeah. It's like a the last supper moment. Like a sort of tati pang scene. Yeah, thanks. And the butter. This pang is from a neighborhood? This pang Tari? is from the neighborhood. Should I put some butter on that? You got to put a lot of on it. lot of stuff on it. <laughs> yeah. Just dob, dob. That, that's good enough, I think. Because my heart is not doing so well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. you. Spray it with the spoon. Cool. Yeah. All right. You know, this is the most chilled shoot I've ever done. I've been asked to be proper in every other shoot. This one, I can do whatever I want. All yeah, right. I'm going yeah. to take one of your Jaffna curry based lingus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But right. and give me your sister's uh, Jaffna curry powder. Uh, I love Jaffna. Can I put dal? You don't eat dal. You're looking I at dal. Very no, I eat dal. Lovely yellow, no? Yeah, you don't put a that, That's enough. No tadka. Yeah, you don't put any other things nothing, into it. Nothing. Just like just raw. Just yeah, dal. because you're going to get the heat from everything, uh, everything else. Everything no? else. All right. Yeah, you have to have a bit of chunky fat. I have. Oh, yeah, sorry. A bit of fat. Ah, okay. Oh, thanks. So I have to ask you something. Huh? What do you think about society life? I, I believe, don't see I, I don't really mean it. <laughs> bit like that. With shades on, we're like yeah. really cool. So this is it, no matter. But is there anything else? No, I'm just asking you. I don't see you around so much. Like, what is your definition about life in Colombo? Not in Sri Lanka, Colombo. So I have, I live, well, not, not right in Colombo, but I live in Colombo. I like, I enjoy being in Colombo. I think Colombo is cool. Okay. It's got uh, everything you need, I suppose, in South Asia. Uh, to have good. a to have a decent good ah that's good that is good i only tried the dark one okay yeah colombo is nice i like colombo okay and what is your definition about people as in mm. gender yeah like you have faith in humanity oh god yeah i believe i think i believe in people i think if there is a if there is any change to come it's people no mm. i don't i'm not so much into any kind of transcendent uh, power. I believe that uh, humanity is capable of, of uh, doing its best and doing its worst. Okay. Yeah. But what are your? What do you think that this country is lacking today in terms of the field that you work in? Like, what would you say is a future that you look out for? I look for a future where there is education reform. Hmm. I look for a future where the existing health science curriculum, for example, is taught in schools. A future where teachers would go and ask the health science teachers, why didn't you teach my kid about HIV? Why didn't you teach my kid the HIV lesson? Because mm. they go and ask everything else, yeah. <laughs> IT, English. So mm. why not ask about that lesson? Because a lot of stigma discrimination is based on ignorance. And our education, our textbook can dissipate that ignorance. So that's the future I look forward to and more stuff on relationships, more stuff on empathy, more stuff on respect for sure. Mm. Oh, sorry, the bacon is good. Mm. Hmm. When you have addressed these problems to the ministerial level or even to the sectors that can have the authority of changing hmm. or sort of restructuring these things, hmm. what have their answers been? Because we have other priorities at this moment. We always have other priorities. Yeah, so that's why I'm a firm believer in the fact that education reform can bring along long term change. Hmm. Because if you take gender-based violence, for example, or sexism or misogyny, I think we'll have the same conversation 20 years hence yeah. if we don't do something now. It's, yeah. just, it's a simple thing. So education is the only way to change a boy calling a girl a caller or a badu or mm. thinking that that is an acceptable term. Uh, because misogyny starts with everyday sexism and then that leads to violence. So that's just mapped. It's known. There are sensible programs in place globally to end it. Uh, so, I don't see any reason why the National Institute of Education and those involved can't bring about a change. Okay, this whole myth about, you know, where people say, oh, Colombo life, city life does not actually um, come along with abuse and things like that. Does, mm. Is it true? What do you mean? Like, do, do you think, like, you know, all these problems that we speak about is just rural sectors? <laughs> okay. There is nothing that I have seen in anywhere that isn't here. So if you take incest, if you take rape, if you take child pornography, if you take sex work, uh, you have sex workers, for example, in Sri Lanka who will walk into a five-star suite. Mm. And you have sex workers at the other end who will operate 
in a Palpata under the Calanier Bridge. Mm -hmm. So you have that gamut in Colombo. Which and is you the have type of conversation is different about it. The type of conversation is different because apparently no one has sex in Sri Lanka. Apparently <laughs> everyone was <laughs> delivered by stock. Yeah. Right? I mean, also remove these shades. Oh, I mean, I love these specs. All right. Just wanted to let you know why, why we are wearing this. Because Hans is seen wearing it most of the time. Especially the bloody hideous pink ones. Yeah, Where did you these. find them? Let's these wear are, it again. These it's are at some party. Okay. So they had all the colors. I had all the colors. But you have three now. You have a blue. I have a blue, a pink and yellow. Yeah. Where do My you wear this? Just when you go shopping? When I go out? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have shades. So ah, if yeah, I remember, right. if I need shades, I wear these. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Simple solution. So a few things about Hans. He doesn't shop. He wears his one black shirt. Hmm. Which he buys from Odell. Yeah. Yeah. And that is bought every two years. <laughs> when the black has become grey and partially touching white. When everything has just faded off into one colour. I have a light blue shirt also now. Oh, oh my yeah. god, you have, a, you, you have upgraded your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. He has one pair of shoes, which is a boot. Which you can see at any occasions where it requires a five star hotel entry. But any other time, it's always his slipper. How many pairs of jeans do you own? Two. Uh, the sarong. Hmm. Lots of sarongs. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, this particular print on this t-shirt stopped in 90s. <laughs> Nobody owns it actually. You should archive this t-shirt. Nice t-shirt, no? Yeah, because one day it'll become very treasurable. Hmm. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you have used the product well. Alright, so in terms of um, what's new for the job that you do, the work that you do, because you're passionate about it. You have opened your house to so many people who have walked in with problems to come and speak. It's a place where you will not be judged. Um, and anyone can walk in and speak about the problems that they have in terms of anything that is so sensitive that they can't talk about it, even to their family members. What is next for such an environment that you have created? Well, it's like this. I mean, we'll continue to be here for anyone who wants to come in and have a discussion about anything to do with sexual and reproductive health, drugs, HIV, uh, violence. Um, we also provide uh, support, uh, even residential support if required, mm. can sort it out. Um, what's next is really we just seem to be gravitating towards schools. Mm. So I spent last week in Batiklo, the whole of next week in Batiklo and I'll be working with teachers there. So I think schools is where we need to focus. Uh, we have to stop playing catch up with adults. We need to start young. And I think all our energy will go into early childhood education and ed education reform in schools. I think that's where our energy is going. Super. So if you feel that you need to get their help, you could always find them on Facebook or just write to them on any form of social media. Um, Hans, before we wrap things up, your food was amazing. Thank you. I would love to eat this every day, but I don't think you I'll die. live long to shoot. You die. You I'll, die. I don't know whether I'll live long. He actually eats a lot of oats. That's what you eat mostly. Yeah. No? Oh. Yours must be steel cut, huh? <laughs> That's his new thing. Yeah. But I'm eating instant right now. No, not good. Steel cut. Steel cut is you have to cook it for a long time. Yeah, I feel so like a horse good. eating it. <laughs> punaku. <laughs> yeah, it's like punaku. <laughs> anyway, oats is actually good. Just a little tip to coat chicken and fry Superb, it. superb, superb. Superb, oh. but not too much. Uh, virgin coconut oil. Yeah. yeah. You will die anyway. Virgin end coconut oil. At <laughs> the end of the day, it's all dead. No, coconut oil is okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, before we wrap things up, I have to I always say a line about the person who I feature on the show. It's a very different uh, down on fire. There was a reason behind it. Because Hans is very raw, and that's what I like about him. I actually got a chance, actually, I will say, one of the best theatrical experiences I've ever had in my life was to act with him in 2015 in my first weedy appearance. And ever since then, I have fallen in love with the work that he does. And of course, even as a person, I treasure him a lot. And I once said it on Facebook, and you replied saying, Really? <laughs> <laughs> but you are someone who I, I think. I'm off Facebook. Huh? Really? Mm. Why? Cambridge Analytica, man, too much. Okay. Mm. But um, the truth is, uh, Hans is someone who I really tr trust, respect, and honor. I will not say it always, but um, it's the truth. Mm. And for Hans, at any time, I will say, I will do it. Whatever it could be, I will always be there for him because that's the amount of love and affection mutual, I have. Mutual, mutual, I know, mutual, I know, mutual. I know. Did you eat the chili? Eat the chili, then you'll see how no, much no, I love Jesus you. Christ, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to wrap things up on the show. It has been an honor having you all tune in. We will see you with another cool episode. Till then, you have yourself a great, yummy uh, days ahead. Mm -hmm.